Uh, I would say one of the biggest pieces of advice I could get, I could give is um, to not just focus on choosing a specialty that you think is going to help you for the rest of clerkship. That's a piece of advice that I had gotten when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to start in when I didn't have a lot of clinical experience. I was kind of told um, if you go into uh, certain areas for your first placement, you'll gain more skills that'll help you with my next placement, which is surgery or internal. I feel like whatever field you decide to go in for your first placement, you're going to get the base skills that you need for all your placements. Taking good histories, physicals, dictating, um, those are just transferable skills you'll get anywhere you go. So I'm glad that I focused more on doing a placement with people I knew would provide a good learning experience. And uh, since I had met Maitri before, I knew that we'd get along. And so, um, and I knew the physicians at the placement were um, just really great people. So I think knowing that you can develop good communication with your preceptor and knowing um, ahead of time that it's feeling confident that it'll be a good learning experience was kind of the best um, choice I could have made. Like, how can other students also be successful in a challenging rotation like this? So when I commit to something, I want to put 100% of my effort into it, um, especially in uh, an area where the cases are really complex. Um, part of what motivated me was just the fact that when I walk into a room, I want a patient to be confident that the person they're speaking to is the right person uh, to help guide them with their treatment. So since when we got a new patient, I was the first person that they'd see in that clinic before they saw the physician about their treatment. I wanted them to know that I had spent the time looking up their case, um, so making sure I got in early that day. I knew when their tests were done, what the whole story of their previous um, kind of diagnosis up until that point was. Uh, so just that they felt comfortable when um, our interaction was done, that they were just in good hands. So I think it's done from me wanting to do well um, myself and make improvements uh, and get as much out of it as I could, especially since we only have two electives and oncology is really a field that I like and wanted to get um, good experience in, but also just for the patients themselves because it's a tough time in their lives and the last thing they need is someone going into the room who they feel like has no idea what their experience has been so far. And clerk is a lot like a full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do after a day of radiation oncology? Do you go home and study? Do you decompress? Like, what, what do you do? So it's a big adjustment because at McMaster we're used to actually being in class only a couple hours a day. Um, five days a week and then most of our studying is done at home so it's a whole different ballpark when you're kind of at work all day and making an adjustment to that um, and I actually live out of town and I've been commuting into Toronto so I would get up around 4 30 or 5 get the train in the morning it was about a two-hour commute to Toronto and then um, we'd be there 8 till 5 5 30 and then commute um, a couple hours home so I found by the time I was home at night, I didn't have a whole lot of time um, to really do anything except for just decompress, eat dinner, head to bed. So I used my commute time since I was taking the train. I used that um, for the first couple of weeks. I would listen to podcasts to understand more about the basics of what what is involved in radiation treatment, what are the different types of radiation beams that are delivered, and how are what are the differences in radiation treatment between different types of cancers and things like that. Um, and then on the way home, I'd use the time to um, kind of log my encounters, which we do um, at McMaster for all of our rotations, and do flashcards. Um, I've been trying to do that uh, for at least half an hour to an hour every day. Um, so most of all of um, the studying and things I did was on the train and then once I get home, I had only about an hour, an hour and a half, and then I'd head to bed to get, get up early the next morning. Yeah. And can you sort of speak to how you make patients feel that they're being listened to? So what I tried to do is even though I'd go into the room and after looking at their chart, I had a good idea of kind of what, this is, what the story was. Um, 
for the past, let's say, two years of treatment and kind of a good background knowledge of their medical history, I'd start by giving them a chance to tell me who was in the room with them on that day um, and just kind of get to know the people that I was talking to. And just, I'd start every interaction saying, I just want to hear from your perspective what your story's been and what brought you here today. Um, one that helps me understand their understanding of why they were in clinic, because sometimes people didn't even realize what the purpose of the visit was that day and that radiation treatment was kind of what they were in clinic for. And two, it just um, gave them the opportunity to just talk if they wanted to um, talk about their experience from their own point of view instead of me telling them, oh, so this is what happened at this time and this is what happened at this time. So I think I just did that by giving them a chance to talk right from the start. And what was your approach to speaking with other physicians or residents or staff? Um, uh, so I really tried to just be kind to everyone, um, make connections with everyone in the clinic, from the nurses uh, in the clinic who bring patients into the room to the physicians and the residents and all the other healthcare practitioners. I just wanted everyone to feel like um, they could approach me if they wanted to ask me questions or anything um, and hopefully build a good relationship so that they'd be open to me approaching them with questions. Um, and I just think that's important because when it came to um, one of our clinics is the endocrine clinic and after we talk to a patient and sign them up for a treatment called radioactive iodine treatment, one of the nurses in the clinic will go into the room and discuss the whole treatment with them. Uh, so by kind of building a relationship with the nurses in the clinic, um, it was easier to approach them when I asked them, I have another patient that needs this explained to them, would you mind going in? And it's nice if you've kind of built a bit of a relationship with those people before you just ask them to do things for you. Um, you can't expect people to help you if you don't treat them kindly. So. Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm a second year McMaster physician assistant student and I just finished my elective rotation in radiation oncology.